is how to use your Joe staff first workout. You're going to be able to use your Joe staff in the very first class for self-defense and to do some spinning to improve your wrist strength, your flexibility, speed, dexterity, all the things that you practice a weapon for. Start with the Joe in your left hand or your right hand. It doesn't really matter. You're going to be holding close to the top. Now, most Joe staffs are going to come up to about here. This one's a little short, but it still works. From here, I want you to push forward. You're going to start to spin as a warm-up in this figure eight configuration. You just went side to side, allowing the long part of the staff to move to the front of the body and to the back of the body. So it literally looks like this. You're just turning in and then turning out, turning in and turning out. The staff is here. You have a little bit here and then the rest of the length here. And you're coming in and out, turning your shoulders, turning your hips. Always keep the other hand up. Don't hit yourself in the face. You can <laughs> if you want. You can hit your arm but it's going to hurt, especially with these heavy Joe staff. After you've done this for 30 seconds, you're going to take the other hand and just place it on top, take this one out of the way, and then same thing. You're just turning over and turning back. This is going to get your abs tight. You're going to have to strengthen your core as you go through this exercise to increase speed. This is also going to get more flexibility, strength in your wrists. Now, in the bow staff, in the longer staff, we do lots of spinning, a lot of fancy techniques. We go behind the back, above the head, and I say that that's for looks, and it's for fun, and it's like uh, conditioning the body the same way that a boxer jumps rope. And I say, but you're usually not going to use the spinning for striking. In the Joe staff, it's different. You are going to use some of these spinning motions to strike. Because the way you're holding it here, you now have this leverage. You have a longer side and a shorter side. And you're able to use this to bring in a lot of power. You're in a fighting position or protected position. You have this first strike. It comes in very quickly, catches them off guard, and you still have a lot of control over it. Meaning that if you hit them on the spin, it's not going to pop out of your hand like it would on some of the fancy bow spins. But in the Joe staff, almost everything we do has a practical application for self-defense or for fighting. So from here, you do your spin, 30 seconds on this hand, bring it back to the first hand, and do another set. You're going to do a lot of these spins to increase your handling ability, speed, strength. It's going to keep your body safe from injury. You get that blood in there. You're going to lubricate the joints. But you're also teaching yourself how to strike and how to deflect, how to block. Imagine he's coming in with a punch straight into your face. You're here, you set back up, and then you smack really fast this first strike. From here, the second strike is equally as powerful. You can see on this bag, I bring it in here, and on the other side, I can bring it back. You're gonna be able to defend here, defend here from the very first move. It's one of the reasons I like this. It also doubles as a walking staff, or thinking the other way around, Use your walking stick for self-defense, and it's very effective. Go back to the other hand, 30 seconds. Other hand, 30 seconds. You're going to do three sets, three sets of 30 per hand. That just gets you three minutes in. That's the other great thing about warming up with a weapon like this is you're going to get your heart rate going, get your heart rate up, start to lean out a little bit faster, all while you're building uh, strength, speed, flexibility, stronger core, you're on your feet. And let's talk about footwork a little bit because you keep asking me about footwork. Don't overthink it, right? Just your feet are under your body. Put one foot in front of the other, get behind your staff, spin it. When you change sides, change feet. A little too close. Spin it. That's all it is. Nothing fancy. Your feet are about as wide as your shoulders. Now, the next move I want you to think of as self-defense. We're getting right into self-defense, fighting with the Joe or fighting with your walking stick. You're going to have the stick between you and the threat. That's one of the basic principles of self-defense. Point your thumb at the threat. This morning I was watching a video. One of my favorite YouTubers, Master Gary Hernandez, teaches a lot with a cane. He was showing these really cool strikes with the, the walking cane using the hook part or the crook from this kind of position. So this is similar to that. You point your thumb and it's going to pop it up into that back hand. Now from here, it goes into the back hand. From here, 
we'll say the threat's here, just straight up. And I'm gonna make that the threat. So I pop it up and I'm just gonna shove or ski or spear into the threat, just straight through them. Think of hitting here, think of hitting here, think of hitting here, right through their midsection. But real simple, real fast, your hands here and then you're in. Now you have two choices. You can either, well, three really, let's talk about all three. You can either push and you'll see as I'm doing that, I'm turning one hand up and the other hand down and that locks it. So from here, choice one, I'm just, I actually did three there. From here, just push. Choice two is like a pull cue, extending your reach, hitting them hard and fast. And you'll see I'm still turning that back hand up just a little bit from here. As I slide it through, and this hand, the front hand, is to guide, to direct where you want that stick to go through them for self-defense. The third one is a combination of the first two. So you have the pushing and you have the lengthening. So, and I think I always naturally do the third one, but all three are correct. One's not good, one's not bad. They're just different, right? From here, I'm going to extend there's that slide through the hand while I'm pushing and locking at the same time. So that's the first move. Starting with your left foot forward or your right, doesn't matter, you're gonna do both sides evenly for 30 seconds, point the thumb, popping it into your hand, and that's all that is. In the first few times you do it, you might miss your hand. <laughs> I still miss my hand sometimes, but after you warm up, you're gonna to start to get a good grip, right? You wanna really get that, Hand nice and tight from here, thrust, thrust, just over and over. Start to add a breath, add a little step with that front foot, increasing your reach, increasing the speed and the power. And then always, obviously I'm watching you, but look at your target. You're pushing in this way, then switch to the other side. This is how you get started fighting with your Joe from the very first time. You pick it up, as soon as you get up, in the mail, where you bring home that dowel rod from the Home Depot, you sand it down, and you get a little bit of linseed oil on there. Now you're ready to go. You from here, push, 30 seconds. And again, watch my front foot. Once you get warmed up, a little step. If you need to move a lot, move both feet. From here, both feet, or the front foot, or Faster, right? Faster. It all depends on what's happening. It depends on the situation, and you're going to change it. One's not good, one's not bad. They're both different, or they're all different. But none of them are wrong, and none of them are right. It depends on what's happening. I want you to learn practical, useful self-defense with your walking stick or your Joe. I don't want you to get stuck in principles that are, are techniques that are refined and broken down into such small pieces that there's only one way because there's never only one way. He's attacking me. I want him out of my face as fast as possible. I don't want him to get close enough. He's got that knife. I've got this long stick. I'm gonna create as much distance as possible and I'm gonna hit him as hard as I can. You're gonna practice that too. Let's go back to spinning here. I like to do spinning, striking, spinning, striking. Every once in a while I'll throw in a block. But I'll be honest, I'd rather hit him first for self-defense than try to block something. I am gonna show you the blocks, but if I'm here, he's coming really fast, I'm gonna throw that first, from here, that first strike. So go back to your spin, and again, one long side, one short side. If you look from the side, it's about where your elbow naturally bends if you're using it as a walking stick, or as a hiking stick, as a cane. Maybe it's a seeing, or not see, you don't see with your cane, right? But um, it, one of those white canes if you use it for getting around because you're uh, sight impaired. That's what I was looking for. Because I know a lot of you who are sight impaired also use these videos to learn how to defend yourself as cane. All right, so back to 30 seconds spinning in each hand. And you're throwing this in because each time you do this, your heart rate's gonna go up just a little bit. And as you do that, you're getting healthier, you're getting fit, more fit, your legs are getting stronger, your core's getting stronger, and your wrists, especially your arms, are getting better at striking for self-defense. You're getting stronger here, especially. Now, 
back to this position. I want to show you the cane in front of you between you and the threat or the cane in the backhand because you might find as you're walking, here comes the threat. You're in this position that, oh, see, I just missed it. Boom. That's why you practice, by the way, because you're going to miss it. Practice that. So you might be in this position or you might be having taken another step, not in that position, and all of a sudden that does, that's not possible, right? And th th you're not going to do this and push, but I am going to show you how this works, and it works so well. It's actually my favorite strike, and that is this, coming straight in. So now it's in your backhand. You take a couple steps. Your soft side, that's the side without a stick, is it between you and the, the threat. That's not a good place to be. So you're going to lift. And as you lift, the other hand just naturally picks it up. And now there's that length again. You've created distance between you and that knife. You and that th uh, thug, that group of thugs. You have distance now and you have options because you have a big stick. Most obvious one here, same thing. It's kind of a thrust. From here, it's in the backhand now. Lift, thrust, and it's just from here in. And think about where you're going to hit. Where are your targets? So you're going for the, the eyes to remove their ability to see you so they can no longer attack their nose or their mouth so they can't breathe temporarily or their throat. They can't breathe permanently. They're done. Solar plexus, knocking their wind out, put that diaphragm into a spasm so they can't chase. Or you're going lower into the groin, right? Or down here. Maybe it's a wild animal or a, a vicious dog in the neighborhood. There was another mauling this weekend here in the local area, another pit bull, two people. One uh, expired and the other one hospitalized, mauled. They were just out for a walk. Now you have a, an option, right? And I'm not advocating any kind of violence toward man or being, but I'm saying that you have every right to defend yourself, practice it in the backhand. Now in the other backhand, same thing, lift and push. Lift and push from here, going different angles or straight in. It's in the uh, backhand, one, or in the other backhand, one, straight in, 30 seconds, go back to our spin. Now, remember what I said at the very beginning, this spin from here has a value in self-defense. If you're using this spin, this will always be a technique that you can use, and it's not just a frivolous, frivolous isn't the right word, let's call it uh, esoteric or aesthetic, is that just a pretty spin that you might do with another style of staff? You're coming through, you know, you do the behind the back, over the head, Darth Maul kind of stance. That's for fun. That's for uh, the look of it. This spin for here with the Joe, between you and the threat, there's a strike. It's in the backhand, there's the strike. And you can see, you can be very accurate. And here's a quick tip. I, when I'm outside, it was, a, it was a tree where we were before uh, tie uh, either a sock with one or two tennis balls in it, like an old gym sock, right, from a rope, and you hang it. And then it, it's because it's tennis balls, it's really light. Good morning. From here, practice accuracy, accurately striking for self-defense, the target, right where you want to every single time. Remember, you can strike it coming in, and you can strike it coming back the other way. One, two, one, two. But without practice, you're not gonna be prepared. And if you don't practice, you don't prepare, you have to panic. You have to, uh, like this, when someone's coming after you for self-defense. Now you have a big stick. It can be your walking stick. It can be your uh, cane that you use if you're sighted impaired, vision impaired, or it can be your Joe, your Japanese Joe staff, which is that shorter staff. It's not the Hanbo, which is the smallest one, but it's, it's right in the middle, right? All right, so you have your Joe. We've done our warm-up spins. And we keep coming back to them. And the reason why, especially with this heavy staff, this is a heavy Joe, with this heavy staff, it's forcing me, I can feel it, squeezing the abdominal muscles, my posture muscles, that keep me looking tall and straight and youthful. Same thing's gonna happen for you. Plus, it's gonna get your heart rate up, it's gonna strengthen your arms, your wrists, using all the muscles that you need for self-defense. When you change hands, one hand just comes over the other one. Now I'm coming in, I'm turning, I'm twisting, 
It's just that figure eight, you're carving a figure eight sideways. I should with an open hand or with my finger, right? I like to think of the thumb. Carve it sideways with the thumb. It's also known as an infinity or an endless spin because that's the infinity sign. When you're going through here, back and forth, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how to change the hand position to this type of hand position because this is the next strike. Now from here, it's in my front hand again. We're back to the strikes. Always review. There's the first one we did. First one, then we put it in the back hand. There's the second one from here. When I say always review, I mean every day you get your staff out. You get your staff out tomorrow. You did this today. Do all of this again tomorrow, the next day, the next day. Only a few uh, minutes of each, right? Don't spend all day doing it. You're gonna get better incrementally, a little at a time. It's called challenge and support. I'm gonna give you something new. You're gonna practice said it's gonna be a little hard but not out of your reach and then you're gonna be like oh that was easy I'm good at that now and it's not that it gets easier you just get better so from here the third third strike third strike I'm gonna bring it into that same position I had when I did the thrust but instead of thrusting in I'm going to bring it through this way at the angle think of temple jaw clavicle shoulder ribs right Think of that guy coming in with that knife. From here, you have to respond very quickly. From here, one, just straight, you have to hit that angle. You don't have time to thrust, straight down. So you're gonna come from here, across the body, and this creates so much force. And here again, I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. The first way is with your hands apart, and the reason that your hands are apart, either here or with the katana. I know you guys have been asking me for Boken katana the Japanese sword, your hands are apart. And look what I do, twist my wrists, get them out of the way so you can't get them cut off right, traditionally. This is wrong, this is correct when it comes to that. The bow staff, don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be so much perfect. That's what you, use that. Don't wait until you have the perfect Joe. Use that hickory stick. All right, so from, you know what I like to practice Joe with? And this uh, seems obvious, right? But it's feel, it feels totally different at first. And then almost all the same techniques can be done. I don't do as many thrusts. But the axe handle, the hickory axe handle, because that thing's heavy. And you know that thing has a lot of force. It's going to be able to, as a self-defense tool, it's going to really work, right? I mean, if you get caught walking around with an axe handle, you might have to explain that more than you would a hiking stick. That's why these are so great. You can take these almost everywhere. The only thing better is a walking cane. So from here... I'm here, and I'm going to slide this hand down. Now, this is the key. From here, same, same as before, I point my thumb at the threat. That puts it in your back hand, and then I'm going to slide. And as I'm sliding, that's increasing the speed of that strike. I'm pulling. I'm pulling with the back hand. I'm directing the strike with the front hand. This is the front hand. It could be here. I could be on the other side. You're going to learn this in a moment because you have to know this before you move on. But you're going to slide that hand as you're coming in for the strike. Now, I'm finishing here. And the reason that you're going to finish with your hands apart is that gives you control. Think of it this way. If I hit you here and I come through and that leaves me open and you're too close, you got me with the knife, right? If I hit you here and you're still coming, I bring it here, I bring it here, bring it down on top, straight through the middle. You have many options if you can control it. Sometimes though, you want that big baseball strike, the baseball bat, right? And that, by that I mean with your hands together. Either baseball, this would be golf, don't golf. But from here, and you are gonna follow through because you're not, if you're swinging full speed, full power, you're not gonna be able to stop it here. That's going to go through for self-defense. But sometimes you need that. Maybe you need to clear two or three of them are coming at once. And you got in this position. And when you finish your strike, you went all the way through. But understand how they're different. And they're not good or bad. They're different. This gives you control. You can stop it where you want it. This one, and I got to back up away from the camera. I'm going to break the camera again. This one, you can hear it, right? The speed's coming so fast, you're not going to be able to stop that. So practice that. We're here. Lift. And pushing with that backhand. 
30 seconds. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot the point. Point the thumb. 30 seconds here. Point the thumb. 30 seconds. Then switch hands. Point the thumb. And same thing with the other leg in the lead. Remember to push that hand. And then throw in a couple toward the end. And feel when your hands come together how much more speed and power and strength comes through. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Now, back to the spin. But now I want you to do a changing motion so that your grip is different. So from here, this, with the length coming out of the bottom side of the hand, think of a screwdriver. We used to call it an ice pick, but so many people now don't know what an ice pick is, right? But think of a screwdriver coming out of the bottom, attacking somebody. The opposite of the screwdriver is the hammer. The hammer would be the big side coming out of the thumb. So this is screwdriver, that's hammer. Or think of this, this is the, the most, um, because this is such a versatile weapon and your hands can slide all over it and you can do all kinds of things with it, there's, there's no end, right? And there's no, one, there's no positive or negative grip. It's just con your hands are constantly changing and moving all around this thing. And it's, it, that's why it's such a powerful, versatile, amazing weapon. So we're just going to call it screwdriver and hammer. The length coming out of the pinky side, screwdriver. When it's on the other side, hammer. Boom, boom, boom. And that's how you use it a little bit differently too, right? So from here, I'm going to go into that figure eight spin that you've now done for about seven or eight minutes. 30 seconds at a time. And when it comes to the outside of your body, you're gonna pop the three fingers, the last three, behind. And then you're gonna allow the momentum to continue to turn your hand until your palm is facing up. And then you're gonna continue the momentum, grab it with your thumb, meet the momentum meaning that it continues the spin. Once your thumb has it, pull the first finger out, and now you're in the hammer grip. So we're gonna go over that a few times slowly. So it starts here, palm up, first finger, middle finger, continue the spin, palm down, because we're going in the opposite, getting back into that ice pick or screwdriver. And then as it hits the ground, or as it goes toward the ground, grabbing with the thumb, the first finger's out of the way. So from here, one, two, I'm in here, one, and I'm back to here. So this is your practice. You're going from one grip to the other grip, one grip to the other grip. I'm gonna show you with this hand. This is a heavy staff, I get fatigued very quickly. Plus I have, I have this uh, nasal thing, uh, um, allergies. I don't know if you can hear it. Allergies are wearing me out today. So I pop this up as I come in. My uh, palm is facing the sky. Those three fingers. So that's all that is. When the length faces the sky, right now I'm closed. I just pull the first three fingers, or the last three fingers out of the way. Continue the spin on the outside of the body. See how I open my hand? Continues to spin. When it does, Thumb grabs it, the first finger gets with the other three, and now I'm back into this grip. So I'm here, one, two, one, two. Palm up, first three fingers back, continues to spin around. My thumb grabs it. As it turns, it's facing the ground. It continues the spin. My thumb's got it. Get that first finger out of the way. And the negative grip to go back. The, it, the long side will always face the sky when you change hand positions. First three fingers, back, drop. And see how my hand is turning? It's just turning in that regular, familiar way. Pop it out of the way. Thumb has it. And I'm in this position. Now, this position, there are all the strikes that you would use with 
the katana, the Japanese sword, right? Or a Kali stick or a short sword like a machete. You can bring around the body. You'll practice all those things. And I'm going to give you those in the next or the subsequent. This is class one. So in the other classes, I'm going to show you all the different strikes you can do in this position and in this position, right? Often you're going to have both hands on it. So let's talk about both hands again. This is a push-up position. You're almost always going to have your hands alternating, but not always, right? Sometimes your hands will be facing the same direction, but it's not, um, not for a while. We're not going to do a lot of that. Where in the bow, in the bow staff or the long staff, we do a lot of stuff with hands in the same position. In this one, most of it are going to be here, palms facing each other. Now, with your hand in this position, we'll go to the middle. In your hand in this position, I want you to learn first what we call walking, walking in your hands. And the key to this, the, the goal, the outcome, the desired outcome, is to teach your hands to never leave that staff while you're fighting, right? So your hands have to change positions to go from one side to the other, but you're not going to take your hand off and put it back on, hand off. A lot of this, this is beginners, right? This is how we start. But this is, we can't start that way with this weapon. Our, we our hands have to be in constant contact with this weapon. So the first exercise, the hand walking exercise, you're going to pivot one hand around and pivot the other hand. And all you're doing is you're just opening your palm, sliding it, open your palm and slide it, and then gradually increase your speed. You can open your hands a little. I had them really tight for the camera, but that's all you're doing. This is called hand walking. Just practice this 30 seconds like everything else. And then I wanted to show you the more advanced way, but you need both ways. So practice, always do this first, get really good at that. I know it's, it's not that fancy, it's not very exciting, but learn that one first. Second one is you're gonna have your hands here on one side, the other hands here on the other side. So you're just holding your staff, your hands in the middle. One hand, see how I just closed it? That just keeps it from falling on the ground. You're not gonna do that later, but, but allow yourself to do that. Don't, don't judge yourself on this stuff, just go with it, right? From here, palm up, slide to the middle, especially when you're a beginner. If you're getting frustrated because you can't get things as a beginner, you've got to change your mind. Why should you know this? Were you born doing this? No, none of us were. So allow yourself to be a beginner when you're a beginner from here. And don't get so impatient. Don't lose your temper with yourself because you're not picking something up or you can't do it the way I'm doing it. I've been doing it for a very long time. And if, they, if you're a beginner, you might get lucky on a couple techniques, but things like this, you're going to have to fight for, fight to keep going. All right, so you open your hand, adopt a growth mindset. I can't do it yet. As long as you say yet, you'll get it. Palm up, sliding in to the middle. Palm down, sliding into the middle, turning, sliding the first hand out and the second hand in or out. So one, two, turn, three, four. Slow, smooth, smooth is fast. Fast is powerful. Fast will knock them out. Fast will knock your teeth down their throat for self-defense. So slow, smooth, smooth is fast. And then once you start to get a feel for it at the pivot point, at the balance point, allow yourself to continue to try to slide them out. Now this is a newer staff in the link below. You, this, I got this from the link below if you're interested in getting one. It says like get martial arts gear here or whatever. This is what they come like. And there's a finish on it. And so you asked me this too. I want to be very clear. If you don't, I, and I couldn't find my sandpaper because I was going to sand this one before because I'm getting tired of how tacky it feels. Tacky meaning that it's like too uh, sticky, right? You can either, either wear all of the finish off of your hands or I don't, I'm not spending this enough every day to do that. I'm going to get some sandpaper today. I'm going to take that finish completely off. And because these are inexpensive staffs, this doesn't have like 12 coats of whatever. This probably has one quick spray coat of some cheap polyurethane. So I'm going to pull all that off so I can get to the wood. And I want the oil from my hands to feed that wood. That's how your staffs stay flexible and strong for a long time. Daily practice. You can see the sweat. That's salt, right? But there's also a lot of oil in there. 
that oil is getting into the wood and it's keeping the wood hydrated. Wood needs oil. And if you don't do it enough, once a week just uh, rub it down with some linseed oil or mineral oil, cottonseed oil, any of those will do. Just get one that's um, boiled as best because they're not gonna be rancid. If you use vegetable oil from the kitchen or olive oil, not only is it gonna smell like olive oil, but those things um, eventually rot. So try to get one that's made for like wood products. So you're going in one, dire way, one direction for a while, then you start going the other direction for a while. And you just do that over and over and over again. All right, so let's finish with a quick review. I want you to warm up with this figure eight spin. And again, all figure eight spins with a short staff because you have leverage because of where you're holding it. You're not holding it in the middle. You're holding it here. That becomes a strike. That's a very effective, useful strike for self-defense. After that, get into a position where the staff is between you and the thread. So front hand, front leg, push it into the back hand, and you have a straight thrust, or you can slide, or you can do a combination where you slide and thrust at the same time. Then the next, we went back between every um, section today, we did another set, 30 seconds per hand of that figure eight spin. Then put in the back hand. Now they catch you off guard or you feel more comfortable here. They're here, the threat's in front of you. We'll put them here again. You're gonna lift and point that at them. This time, instead of pointing your thumb, you're pointing your pinky, right? And the other hand just comes up, takes it, and you have that thrust. Another very effective, very basic, get started from the first day on how to use your Joe, self-defense strike. And again, this thing could be a walking stick, a hiking stick, or a uh, vision impaired person's cane, one of those white canes. It's very effective for self-defense. It's about the perfect length, the same length. And then we went back to our spins. We went into that first strike again, and then added, well, I don't know if we added, we just worked, talked about that second strike. You can practice it, strike one, strike two. And what I said was, as your hand comes from the top down, that's gonna accelerate that strike. Pushing and turning, the back hand is doing this, back hand's pulling through that uh, arcing motion on that strike. All your strikes are gonna be an arc. None of them are gonna be chopping straight down. You're always gonna slice with this weapon. So as you're slicing here, this hand is directing where you want it to go and accelerating it. And I said, you stop here, you have more control. You keep going, it's like a baseball bat. You have more power, but almost no control. This creates a pivot point, and you're gonna overshoot your target, which you might need. You wanna stop the fight right away. They're coming in fast, and you have to come through here, then you can do that. But understand there are two ways to do it. If your hands come together, you're gonna to over rotate because you, you won't be able to stop the weight of that staff. Bring your hands here, you always have control, and then that'll give you another series of things that you can do because you have that hand separated. Then we went back to this, the spin, and we talked about changing hand positions. So from here, we just called this, kind of like that ice pick or screwdriver attack grip. And then we taught this, that hammer grip. And so you're going from one grip to the other grip in your practice for this first workout and how to use a Joe staff. Do that for 30 seconds on each side. And then instead of just doing a regular figure eight, from now on in your workout, warm up with the figure eight, but then go to this hand changing so that you get really, really strong wrists and a really strong grip. And then we finished with hand walking and then starting with your hands on the side, sliding in and then sliding out the other way. So one side, you can even do it like this if you want. I like to do it this way and I count in my head. This is the way I'm made. I do this 20 times so that I can force myself to do this 20 times. And if you drop it, that's in the middle of your set. Pick it up, keep going. So you get 20 good ones and then 20 the other way. And the last thing that I'll remind you of is that this has a finish. If you get these inexpensive ones with the link below from the martial arts supply store, like Century or whatever, take a piece of sandpaper and take off all that finish. Get super smooth, and then start to use the oil in your hand to feed it. If you don't use it every day, grab a rag and a little bit of mineral oil or cottonseed or boiled linseed oil or something. 
and put a little thin light coat on it once a week and then it'll stay flexible and strong and you'll be able to use it for a long time let me know in the comment section below what questions you have this is always a discussion i always love to hear what you think feedback all those things section below 